A new study finds patients classified as overweight or obese have a tougher time fighting COVID-19 even if they have a milder form of the virus. The U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report those who are overweight or obese were 67% more likely to experience longer lasting respiratory symptoms than those of normal weight who average around 34%. So joining me right now is Dr. Hussein Abbas from Memorial Hospital. So good morning, Dr. Abbas. Thank you so much for joining me. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So um, I am curious, what is the link between obesity and COVID-19? Did it start at all during the lockdown? That's actually true. So as you said, we know that actually obesity is an independent factor. So what that means is um, even if you don't have high blood pressure, cholesterol, lung issues, simply being overweight or obese can actually increase the severity of COVID-19. And, you know, some of the theories out there is that obesity is what we call a pro-inflammatory process. So what that means is patients who are obese, it's, as you're aware, it's a complex disease. It's not simply just having the excess weight. There's a lot of other hormonal and metabolic um, effects that leads to obesity. And so we think that probably they're already in this pro-inflammatory um, status. And we found out that COVID is also a pro-inflammatory condition. And basically, that's why we see a lot of the lung injuries. And so if you're already in that revved up cycle, part of the um, inflammation, then, you know, getting the, the uh, virus does not actually help. And what happened, too, is we got the double whammy really during the pandemic, because as you're aware, we locked down a lot of things. So even simple things like getting up, getting dressed, shower, go to work, um, stop. We basically rolled out our beds into the kitchen and back on the laptop. So that was a terrible combination, actually, to have. And I know a lot of people struggle with weight, especially during lockdown and quarantine. It was not easy at all. <laughs> but does this at Correct. all yeah, does this at all play a role into this research? Absolutely. In fact, there was multiple research that were that, that were done. Uh, one was even on kids. But we noticed that the BMI of kids actually went up <clears throat> by a, pound, a point or a point and a half um, during the six months. And I am seeing more and more patients in my office. Um, who I think what, what happened during the pandemic, it, it gave, him, gave people a hiatus, made them focus on what's important, which is the overall health. Because as I tell everybody, it's not just about losing the pounds. You know, losing the weight is important, but it's also about gaining back control of life and essentially your overall health and feeling better. Um, so the pandemic definitely contributed to that because our activities became very, very low. And not just my patients, even I struggled with keeping my weight off because, you know, the routine things that we used to do, we were no longer doing. And so physical activity and burning calories was significantly um, down. So it definitely contributed to increasing the weight or unnecessary actually weight. And you said it's not just about <clears throat> losing the pounds. So what can we do to uh, lower, you know, this risk? I think, to be quite frank with you, I think there is, um, you know, uh, what we call uh, what I believe to be kind of like a fat shaming out there in that we try to simplify this. This is a truly complex condition. It's not simply about, um, say, just eating less and just exercising. Those are very important part of it. But there's a lot more going on in the body that we need to address. And that's why this has actually become an independent field. There are a lot of there's a lot of research out there. Um, there are people like myself who, uh, you know, we are, even though I'm called a bariatric surgeon, I'm not purely a surgeon. I really have a lot of interest in obesity and how can we tackle that? There are many options out there, you know, and it starts with the diet, increasing activity, depending on the patient's condition. Some people have hip pains, knee pains, knee replacements. Um, and so what we do is we will um, <clears throat> it work with them. So even if I need to start them on medication slowly change their medication, adjust the medication, and then we will work and see what is the best option for them. You know, as you're aware, like Halloween is coming up. I can't get that off of my mind. So definitely go collect the, um, the, 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 the candy, but do not eat it. Please do not eat it. <laughs> Take sure that you're walking, but don't eat the candy. Well, there you have it. I mean, yeah, a lot of people love to indulge in Halloween, but, you know, we all have to be careful. So as you mentioned, well, thank you so much, Dr. Abaz. It was a pleasure speaking with you this morning. Thank you. The pleasure is mine.